Hello, everyone, and welcome back to episode three of the QSL podcast. Uh, today, I am joined by myself, Jeremy. I am joined by the King Coochie Man himself, and also our favorite Red Sniper Twenty Three. How are you boys doing? Uh, I'm fantastic, Jer. How are you? Oh, I am. <laughs> tired but okay okay <laughs> i think i think that's i think that kind of goes around for everybody right now oh yeah oh yeah. yeah but uh we do have an exciting show for you today so at the top of the show we're talk we're going to talk about some big roster changes um and general news and scope and then we'll go into the week in review talk about the games that were played their results our thoughts and then finally, we will give our predictions and our thoughts about week three, which, by the way, looks exciting as hell. Oh, yeah. So, uh, with that in mind, uh, let us begin with the review. So, NMR is back in full force. Um, oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, NMR signed up before the the draft um, as he went to basic, and so it is completely legal. He he never played any single prospect game, so he was ineligible to play for the first two weeks, and now he's finally eligible to be picked up and the first team in the waiver wire order based upon the fact that they're at the back um, of the line in the draft, they also have yet to win a game. So even if uh, things were reset to where standings are, they'd still be pretty close. Um, they just get to pick up NMR, which really helps out their roster. They've been having a couple troubles here and there. Um, Kaneki having a real life problem, which, you know, real life takes precedence over Smite every single day of the week. So that's 100%. unfortunate, but yeah, 100%. So Kaneki will lose his captain spot. Tant takes over and they get NMR there. And I believe that Joe from New York uh, will be the sub. So that's how their roster has shaken out so far. Unsure where they're going to put NMR, but I'm sure they'll find a place where he can thrive, which is literally anywhere on the map. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll see. They do have a couple of people on that roster that are pretty flexible. Um, I mean, we've oh, seen yeah. Tantalus play support mid and ADC in the last three weeks. So, <laughs> I mean, at, at least with one guy, you have a bit of flexibility. And I'm I'm sure that roster has a few guys that can play in two or three different roles. So we'll see how that changes with NMR now coming onto that roster. Mm -hmm. And who sure. knows? Who knows? Maybe maybe Z Tantalus takes a, a page out of... Uh... Zoraik's book, her Ice Fox's book, and he he takes a seat on the bench himself. Who knows? Who knows? There's a, the, like you guys said, there's a lot of players on that team that can uh, kind of move around a little bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, for sure. It's a very flexible team, and that can be very advantageous. But uh, we do have a second roster move. It was uh, pretty substantial in terms of, well, more or less unprecedented we had a three-way trade like as if this was the nba I, I i was gonna say it's not quite like the second roster move it's like three roster moves all at the same time <laughs> trying to figure out who, you know that somebody's trying to play 4d chess here to just to you know make the trade work and somehow some way the, this person got it to I don't know I don't know what you owners are going through right now, <laughs> but stop it because you're driving me nuts. Okay, hey man, that, we're we're just we're just trying to make the the schmoves. What's best for the players, uh, really, and 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 teams. So we do have two people here who have insights into this trade, and we'll talk about it. But first, we actually have to say what the trade was. So Adrian goes to the Pittsburgh Phantoms. Destiny goes to Booney Gang. And Raven Strider ends up on the King's Dukes. So uh, to top off this, I'll, I'll give my insight into it. So um, it's not that we hated Raven at all. Raven was a great player. Um, all of our players loved him. Um, 
uh, we just feel like he would be placed better on a squad that plays differently. Um, everyone on our team seems to tend to our majors team tends to play very, uh, very W key. Um, Raven tends to be a little bit more safer. Um, and based upon his comms, he's definitely somebody who seems to be more comfortable from support rather than solo. Not that he, you know, w wasn't doing perfectly fine because he was. Um, and you know, just, just small stuff like that. Um, we think he'd be better, um, somewhere else. Um, and, and I love Adrian. Adrian's a great player. Um, a great dude too. And I, I think that he'll have, uh, a great deal of fun on our squad versus uh, being on, on, on his former team. And it also solved the additional problem of destiny. Um, he had a couple problems whenever he was on Dukes that I'm sure Coot can uh, attest to, at least in, in, in limit. Um, and so now he can go to somewhere where he can feel completely comfortable playing. So lots of problems here solved, uh, in my opinion. Cooter? Yeah, from from my side, I mean, Destiny didn't really have it. The problems that occurred previously ended up being resolved. Everybody was okay, um, but even still, um, we have or ha have still, but we had six phenomenal players, and Destiny could, just couldn't find a way uh, to crack the the starting roster for the for the team because we do have somebody uh, in Drew that that is a bit better in jungle, and then we have uh, Ot G who is better in uh, support, where, where we actually tried Destiny out for a little bit. Um, so it just made more sense to move Destiny somewhere where he could actually crack the starting roster. Um, and getting Raven Strider in return um, is huge for us because we are really looking for somebody to to have the good comms in in game. Um, and Raven Strider seems to bring that. So Raven Strider will actually be competing for the starting support job, like you were talking about. Um, so that's very, very advantageous for us. And I think, uh, based on uh, talking to Castler, I think that Destiny ends up going back to his season two role in the solo lane, and Subkiller ends up going to the the role that he signed up for, which was support. What a front line, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What a crazy front line that is. So um, it's going to be very exciting to see. And then the one final note is that uh, due to multiple instances of BM and other assorted issues, say no MFG has been banned from QSL. And in future seasons, he can ask moderators for an unban, and that requires a unanimous vote by the moderators but he's he's gone for the season for sure so little noms will be looking to complete their roster at some point they're in talks right now so that about covers all of the moves and such i think we missed so, one i think uh i don't know if this was covered last week i don't think it was but dragon got picked up by um the obsidian mages as well Mm, off, yeah, yeah. They they also had to complete their roster because of issues. Yeah, that one has not I been believe. officially announced yet. So that one yes. will be coming up shortly. Yes, My fault. Yes. So, little, little breaking news that might yeah, be breaking coming. News. <laughs> breaking news. Just just wait. Yeah. Or um, just breaking, you know. On the but on the edge of the QSL heartbeat here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Coot's a reporter on the beat. Um, yeah. But anyways, let's get to the content that I'm sure you're all expecting. The week in review. So to top us off, we have Phenoms versus Reapers, a pretty clean 2-0 victory. What are your thoughts, Cooter? That was a, that was a set. The Phenoms really came out and they showed that you know they're they're not any a team to be messed with um and you know on the other side of that coin is the the reapers who who seem to over the last couple of weeks they've moved some people around they moved um Poyo from ADC to jungle they moved Inori from jungle into his more I believe it's his uh more natural position of ADC um 
Unfortunately for them, I think that's probably the right the right move for them. But unfortunately, they just ran into a team that's very polished and very good right now. Um, so hopefully, moving forward, the Reapers can, you know, uh, get a, get a couple games under their belt, get a couple scrims maybe, um, and actually get that roster working. But it was a a very very good game from Phenoms. Red yeah, I mean, even even speaking from the other side of that, that was such a, a heartbreaking loss for um for Reapers because I mean when you when you had these expectations going into the season, you looked at their roster and you went, you know, how can these players not play well? I mean they they've played together a few times already. We know the majority of them from previous QSL seasons. Um you know, you you look down the list and it's like, wow, this this team should have a good chance against anybody. And then to lose like that to Phenoms just demonstrates how, first of all, how well the Phenoms have drafted. Because they have not, they have literally not changed their roster at all. And then on top of it, just to show the difference in how... The Reapers are gelling and the Phenoms are gelling. And uh, I kind of, I'm kind of thinking in the back of my mind that, you know, the Reapers kind of had a bad night and the Phenoms had a good night. And it, that was just one of the issues there. If, if you have a bad night, you can't do it against the Phenoms because if you have a bad night, even their bad night or their average night is still going to be better than your bad night. It, it It's just the way it's going to work th- sometimes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's it's you don't even really have to say it's it's even like draft diff. Um, that yeah. team just, I mean, you you laugh, but like that team is like they play really well together. They all mesh extremely well. They have a ton of just coordination and cooperation amongst themselves. Uh, not to mention they're all very very strong players too. So, um, <clears throat> this comes as sort of a a. Uh, not not a total surprise. Uh, a couple of couple of us, me and Red, went two and one on the predictions. We thought if the Reapers had a good night, and you know, you see a couple individuals pop off on that team, that maybe they could sneak a game. Um, but unfortunately, they did not have the night that they needed to, and that was the result, a sweep. So we move into the next game here, which was actually a pretty big upset in terms of our predictions because literally no one here predicted that obsidian mages were gonna pull out a victory here and it was it was quite the matchup i have to say um if you look at it game one goes pretty cleanly it's a it's a standard time for a game and then the next two games are 30 plus minute slog fests where the mages are able to just edge out and win and take the advantages there so it seemed that they just played the long game and it was able to work out for them uh not to mention they had to have a sub obsidian mages played with a with a free agent sub man Uh, i can you imagine and and here's the thing it wasn't like Oh, they had to get a uh, you know a a, a a sub for Slim or a sub for Owen or a sub for Scarab. They had to get a sub for Desi, a Grandmaster's mm-hmm. level jungler, and somehow, some way, kicking and screaming, they refused to just die, and they took it out on the Booney Gang. And I mean, Booney Gang, you're looking at that roster and you're going. Okay, sub killer should have been able to do something. You know, a quarren should have been able to do something. You know, Castler should have been able to do something. And it's like one game was squarely Obsidian Mage's game. The other game, you kind of saw a little bit more parody, and then Booney Gang came out at the end. And then game three, you're looking at it going. Okay, who wants to win this game? Because both of them are just scrapping for every little thing. The the fire giant, the primal fury, over and over again. They're looking for some small advantage 
and eventually it was it was the team fight again that he, there was a, a I think there was like a two man pickoff and they were able to run it down solo lane and just push through the Phoenix and win it that way and it was like wow I I was shocked I was absolutely shocked at the end of that and especially with a free agent sub coming into the Obsidian Mages how well they were able to mesh together being that. He literally was picked up and said, hey, uh, are you available to play? And he goes, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, scooter. sometimes sometimes that's how that goes, right? Uh, sometimes something happens and, you know, real life stuff happens where somebody can't make a game. And uh, that's why you stay active in the Discord is, you know, the, the exact situations like this. Dragon gets to play that game and it likely gets him a roster spot because he was able to play and they were they were impressed enough uh with his play that he ends up likely getting picked up. Um we saw a couple examples of that, but one thing from the set that I wanted to touch on was Subkiller. He you talked about Subkiller earlier. Um but we didn't talk about his picks. The first game he played uh <laughs> he played Opwatch. Yeah. And uh he he went he, I think he went 4 408 or something like that. Yeah, it was uh, where insane. they end up winning the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then game 2, he's like, "You know what? The the weird stuff worked the first time. I'm going to play Apollo solo." Yeah. <laughs> and he and then that game, he, he I mean, they ended up losing the game, but he ended up I, I I think he died once in that game. Um and I think he ended up with maybe top player damage on his team. Maybe in the game, I'm not 100% sure, but he played those two picks and they won one of the games. It was incredible. That just shows that, you know, Subkiller is not really somebody that, that you can mess with uh, week over week. He can really drag a team to the finish line. He, he showed it. He, they almost get the win, uh, you know, in, in the set, but unfortunately for them, they did end up falling. Yeah, I'm actually trying to find the uh, <laughs> the stats as you uh, talk about it. Um, and let's see here. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh yeah, so he went three and one. Um, on the Apollo game two, he played. Uh, well, game three he didn't troll. Game game three he went uh, with mm -hmm. big old Odin and went thirteen and three, but wasn't able to. <laughs> Wasn't able to to pull out the uh, the win there, and yeah, he went four zero and eight um, on there. So just to confirm, just to confirm for my sanity's sake, but um, yeah, entirely surprising. But Subkiller still played a fantastic set. But we will now move on to the next game in the order here. Hold on, I'm like juggling a couple things. Um, the big old Dukes versus the Zeus juice two of victory for the Dukes. Would you like to start us off red? Oh boy. Um, well, this one was, how do I put it? This one was interesting because this was a, the Tuesday night where we had some server instability. And so you started off with the Dukes taking game one and it was a pretty measured victory from what I understand um, from the, from what I watched. And, all of a sudden, it's like, well, this person can't get in the game, and then this person can't get in the game, and this person can't get in the game. And it's like, okay, what what do we do? <laughs> where, where, where do we go from here? And, of course, you know, getting low-res diff is never fun. But mm -hmm. eventually, they were able to continue the set. I think it was the next day, and um, Dukes did pull out a 2-0 victory there. Um, I wish I had more details, but the second game was not casted. Um, and there were a couple of things that I just flat out missed. So I wish I knew more of the details on that. Um, but unfortunately, I can't give you those. So sorry. Yeah, yeah, we are without a couple details here. Um, but this is nothing short of what we expected. Um, at least you and me, Red, Skeet did go with the sneaky, you know, uh, one game stolen there, but uh, the Dukes are just a complete team. Um, they play very well, and you know, likely a finals team there for sure. Um, something that you'd probably see, probably like the second seed going into the playoffs, um, honestly. And 
Zeus Juice is they they're currently struggling really to to compete um against some teams. It's not that they're bad, it's just that something isn't really clicking. Um mm-hmm. in my opinion. Um, you know, because that, that team still has a fantastic roster being led by Olive, who who is a great player and a great dude, of course. So um it's kinda it kinda is sad if you're a fan of the big old Zeus juice. Um hopefully they'll be able to bounce back next week. Um, but they do have a tough squad that they have to face, which we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, Cooter, would you like to give your thoughts on your team's victory? Yeah, they did great. They did great in the first game, especially. Um, Zeus Juice is really a fantastic team. I'm not sure what's happening, uh, that, that there's no cohesion, no, you know, they're just not able to sneak a victory here but in the second game i was able to watch it because it was being streamed from um one of my team members perspectives and i thought we were going to drop the game um early in the game uh zeus juice it just if you look at the the slash lines right um i think at one point in the game they were up six kills something something like that and we didn't we didn't have a single kill on the board um but then drew kind of drew kind of took over in the jungle and uh ended up winning that second game in faster than they went they won the first game uh first game was one in 23 minutes i believe second game was one in 20 minutes so they really hit the gas pedal in the second game after going down six kills early um to to end up getting a victory so really good performance by by my team but i'm excited to see what Zeus Juice brings next week, uh, which we'll talk about in a bit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, for sure. So coming up next is the final majors game, uh, Archon Dragons versus the Pittsburgh Phantoms, and the Dragons taking a sweep there, a full loss. And both me and Red were the only two people on the cast for, for the game. Um, so I, I guess, uh, Cooter, give, give your thoughts, start us off. Oh my gosh. His stage is broken. That's, <laughs> those are my thoughts about the, about the set. I mean, honestly, the, the, the dragons early in game one seemed like they were untouchable. I think they were up 10 kills at some point. Um, and they were up like 4,000, 5,000 gold. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, stages hit where he needed to hit and uh just took the game over um which he took the set along with it um very very good performance from stages on that on that patented thoth pick um also another another thing i wanted to mention was uh specify specify ended up playing uh adc for the dragons and started off absolutely on fire in the first game i think he was 6 and 0 7 and 0 um and ended up finishing the game at seven and three, I believe. Um, but very, very good performance. So if there's any captains or owners out there listening who needs an, an ADC or a solo laner, I think Specify is still available at this point. Very good performance from him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's, if you're the Arkham Dragons, you, I mean, you, you walk away from that disappointed, but I don't think either game was really like uh, a total loss per se. Um, they played very well, as you said, in that game one, um, and, and they still played very well game two. I mean, you can, yeah, you can look at the slash lines and go, oh, well, you know, stage is just kind of ran show. But if you look at other slash lines, for example, uh, I'm a gamer and game two had 23 kill participation out of 25 total kills, Mm -hmm. I believe. Like, that's insane. He was all over the map. Um, you know, there, there's a lot to like. Um, you know, coming from the Phantoms, but you know the Arkham Dragons—they they still fought very hard, and it it was a hard-fought victory for the Phantoms for sure. But it, it just goes to show that even with a suboptimal uh, roster there, with uh, Mark coming in to sub in for formerly Raven and and now Adrian uh, in the solo lane, having uh, well actually no, uh, Kexen moving to. The solo lane and then mark roaming around in the jungle um you know uh for many reasons that that's a suboptimal 
uh, roster, and they still managed to uh, pull out a victory, uh, which is highly impressive. And and Kexon played very well despite being sat on uh, for two games straight. <laughs> <laughs> like, have you ever put up a five-star hotel in solo lane and made sure Kexon knew that he wasn't allowed to do anything <laughs> in lane? Um, which was kind of kind of kind of disappointing but uh. i mean on the flip side mark wings did gank duo lane i think four times which i think is probably a record in season three right now of actually having a jungler visit the duo lane four times in a game um but you know to actually try and pull off a couple ganks there it's they were at least looking for advantages on both sides or at least on the other side of the map and now with the mid-season change um uh, again, people were talking about no boots, no boots, no boots, but the map has changed so much that there is a lot more farm everywhere on this map. And so it's almost less punishing for a jungler to rotate over to duo lane because there's a double, there, there's two Chad Harpies now. There's a greater ability to try and grab a buff for yourself if your lane has the pressure. And so seeing Mark come over there and do that, um, he didn't really lag behind in the farm as much as, well, you know, if you just stay on the solo side of the map, there's a, you know, you, you got your jungle camps over there and you're fine. Well, now, even, even now, he was able to relieve the pressure that he needed to, gank when he needed to, and still maintain his farm even if the ganks didn't come off. Yeah, I think one of the keys to that game, like, um... Phantoms are losing pretty hard, and I believe something to the effect was a mark. Go go gank mid, go gank duo, let Kexen just get absolutely annihilated, because half here is just there all the time. <laughs> and and that's their game plan going forward. Just leave Kexen alone. He'll he'll catch up, which he does, um, in both games, and just try and grab the advantages in other lanes. So very, very impressive there, uh, for sure, uh, by that squad. Um, I'm very happy for them. But we do now have to move to the Miners teams Ooh. here. So Lil Noms versus Fairman. Lil Noms take a 2-0 victory there. Uh, would you like to start us off on that matchup, Coot? I would love to. I would love to. The The first game of that that set was the fastest game of the season thus far. Uh, with the the win going to Lil Noms in 19 minutes and 10 seconds, I believe it was. So that was an absolute trouncing, and, and it's not like they were going against a team that were you know five slouches that you know haven't performed all year. Um, they were going against the Ferrymen, who I, I believe were also undefeated going into that match, but they the Lil Noms absolutely took over the game and. They did whatever they wanted to it. They they took over again, finished the game in 19 minutes. It, it was absolutely incredible. Um, and then the the second game came along, uh, same result. The little noms ended up winning, um, but it was a little longer that time 20, 28, 29 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. I don't remember. But uh, some unusual picks coming out for the little noms in the second game. Uh, we saw an Anubis in the jungle. Um, you know, saw for the first time, I believe, this season, Chiron in mid. Um, and we saw Tiamat get through and was played in the solo lane. So it was uh, it was a set. It was a, a very good set for Lil Noms, kind of showing that they are the ones to beat in the, the minors this season so far. Yeah, um... I was one of the casters on that game and being there for that game, you kind of sat there and went, what, how do you stop them? You know, at that skill level, at that cohesion level, you're only in week two. So maybe there's, you know, some growing that can be done on both sides, but then just mechanically, you know, that there's, you know that Anubis jungle is an unconventional pick. And when he's still hitting his wraps and he's still CCing you and he's still blowing you up in the middle of a team fight, you have to go back and go, is it mechanical skill or is there just something that we're not 
communicating about. Because, I mean, my big thing was I thought the Ferrymen played so incredibly well in week one. Um, mm -hmm. When they played against Booney Boys, they won 2-0. I thought they had momentum. Uh, I mean, even, even in, in this game, I mean, going in, and I'm going to put it this way, in the solo lane, you had Satan up against Omega Bulldog, and Omega Bulldog still won lane. I mean, yeah, the team fight maybe wasn't there, but Omega Bulldog still won lane. Um, <laughs> that was the biggest shock to me, personally. Um, but it was almost like when they started getting behind, the ferrymen kind of had this idea of individuality where they said, I need to be the one that steps up and I need to be the one that does something. And so they, they started having the the pitfall of trying too hard. And I think that's kind of the downfall later on, and at least in the second game, where they're like, look, we shouldn't be doing this, but we're going to do it anyways because I got to be the one to win the game. I got to be the one that pops off. And it just, it kind of fell apart that way on them. Um, so hopefully maybe a measured, you know, take a look at the VOD, a measured reflection, and they'll be back for week three. And, you know, I'm looking for the ferryman to bounce back. Um, and it's going to be a good game this week. Um, and I know there's already, you know, grudge match talk back and forth here, but we'll, you know, we'll, we'll get to that with our predictions. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, this result was, yeah, kind of unexpected. Uh, in my opinion, I, I believed that, uh, the little noms were going to win. Um, you know, I, I, that that's that's just me coming out of the gate with that, but I was very surprised to see it be that you know not close at all, you know, especially with that first game there um being the fastest one of this season so far um because the ferryman so first my my previous thoughts going into the season is that the ferryman were gonna be a weak team. That that was my opinion. I I, I thought they were gonna be in 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 the bottom, uh, really fighting to even get into um, <clears throat> the playoffs. And then they showed up and they played very well. I was extremely surprised by their week one result, and so my opinion of them, you know, went up for sure. Um, I believed that they were gonna make this close, and you know, something went wrong, and I. It, it maybe this is going to be the nature of this team. Maybe they're going to be like a very, you know, either very on game or off game uh, type of team. Um, yeah, I'm very excited to see what they, they pull through uh, for the next week. I hope that they can bounce back because that's just an unfortunate uh, results to, to look into. Um, they're definitely going to need to review that set. Um, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, you know, no shot. You have to. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, with that said, though, um, I think we can move on to the next match, the Obsidian Knights versus the Booney Boys. Obsidian Knights taking a big 2-0 victory. Would you like to start us off, Red? Uh, sure, yeah. Um, this is one where I didn't get to watch the whole thing. Um, because I was, there were two games actually concurrently happening. It was this one and, uh, Arc Lords and Charlotte Fury were actually happening at the same time. So I did mm -hmm. catch the end of game two and I just was absolutely amazed by this one. Um, I was not expecting as clean a fight by the Obsidian Knights. Um, I did predict 2-0. Um, there were some serious questions I had about the lineup of Booney Boys, and even when they went with Jeering and Carey, um, which is, I believe, a better fit for him than support, he still seemed a little out of sorts. The, the lineup still didn't quite seem to mesh well and flow well. Um, the communication wasn't there. There were a lot of pickoffs that happened and there were just, there were things there where you kind of sat back and go, why is this all going wrong all at the same time? Um, and 
that was sort of the, the story of the night for the Boonie Boys. It wasn't so much that the Obsidian Knights were just phenomenal above and beyond and just, you know, crazy. I think the Obsidian Knights played exceptionally well. I think they're starting to mesh together as a team, and I think they're there's something that as the season gets on, I think they're going to get better and better. But on the back side of that, I think the Boonie Boys just had a very off night. Um, I don't know if it was because maybe Niall, who is from Wales, is you know was staying up a little bit too late, or um, you know Jeering was kind of out of position, or whatever it was. But something just didn't seem right in the Boonie Boys lineup, and it reflected in that set. Um, and so Obsidian Knights ended up taking that one to nothing. Pretty pretty handily yeah yeah i'm just reviewing the stat line here and um peaceful first of all played a freaking fantastic set is uh mm-hmm. <laughs> is what i'll say going mm-hmm. five and one on on a zeus to begin with and then going 13 and two and 11 on raijin um you know it's it's no surprise there that you know like you know, he would be bas- he's basically the MVP of that set. I don't think that one has an official MVP, but um, that would be my guess uh, because that man popped off. But yeah, there, there's a lot to say about like the roster there. Like I would have expected Niall uh, to be popping off. Um, honestly, you know, I, I've seen Jaring play that ADC and he was kind of nasty with it. So I don't know if he's like off practice or something, but I do expect that I. Uh, they they will bounce back in some fashion um with that roster um bacon's a very good player too um you know i'm a little bit surprised by by this result honestly i know all you guys were against me in the predictions but um i just just seem like i know city knights are a great team it just seemed like booney boys uh should really be able to pull that one through but uh, unfortunate result there. Coot. Yeah, interesting for me. Um, I have to give love where love is due, and that is to uh, Wolfman Sam. Wolfman Sam performed fantastically, fantastically in that in that set. Um, feeding peaceful, peeling peaceful. It was it was a it was a very good display. I ended up watching it later. I ended up watching the vod. Um, and he, man, he is, Wolfman Sam's good. He is, he's a good support. Um, also, an interesting thing that I saw was, you see the, the game one lineup for uh, for Boonie Boys, and you see a Wheelix, uh, decent dive potential. You see Hercules, decent, decent dive potential. You see Sobek, decent dive potential. All of those gods can get to your back line. And then you look at the other side, and you see Zeus, and you see Artemis, and you go, well those two carries are going to have some problems and they didn't. So you have to give credit to Wolfman Sam in that situation. And even Moose um, to, to uh, help peel for that team and, and kind of get a lead and, and not have to worry about the dive coming from uh, the Booney boys. But uh, game two, it was, it was the peaceful, uh, peaceful mind show. He performed phenomenally. Um, Chaos tonight went on Artemis again. Um, maybe that's something that uh, these minor league teams should start banning from chaos tonight. He looked super comfortable, um, but a, a fantastic win for Obsidian Knights team there. Very, very well done. Mm-hmm. For sure. And with that, we will move on to the next matchup, the Kings Knights versus the Chosen Guans. Now, this one, to my credit, I get right. As <laughs> we see the so chosen quads pick up, <laughs> pick, so up the, uh, <laughs> pick up the pick up a pick up a game there, so that way it ends up being a two and one. Um, oh my goodness! I why, wish I could speak. Why to the it more. heck did you guys troll? Just <laughs> Hooter, I am so upset with you. You guys, oh, you had bad. everything handed to you on a, on a silver platter. And you let Lynn, Lynn, go all over you. Not even close. Not even close. You let 
You let the best, the the most improved player from season two absolutely dominate you guys in season <laughs> in the first game. She didn't have it. She didn't have it. She could literally, in the middle of a team fight, set up a beach chair and an umbrella and just start free casting for the back line with a margarita in her hand with no issues because uh, your team decided, yeah, I just, that, no, I'm not, I'm not going to be here for this one. No, you know, the, we'll, we'll, we'll come around game two. Yeah, not a problem. But, you know, yeah, I just don't feel like it. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Uh, At least I, show up uh, 15 minutes late next time. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. I uh secretly I paid off Coot to rig that set. There you go. Um uh, if you I'm take a done. look <laughs> <laughs> Right, if you take a look at the general chat, um, I, I sent a specific meme uh to because I'm I'm in their team server, I sent it to them. <laughs> uh-huh. uh-huh. <laughs> upon upon seeing that happen. Um that, that was that was funny. Yeah. <laughs> With that rant through Cooter, can you you can talk? So two one victory for the Knights. Um somebody's upset about it. I was upset about about it after game one. Um extremely poor for poor performance for uh for the King's Knights in the first game. Um was watching it going crazy. You think Red was yelling right now. Oh boy. I was yelling at the screen the whole time, the whole game, and ended I'm up going so into the. I'm uh... I could have done better. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Ended up, ended up going in there and uh, talking it out after the first game. To, you know, figuring out what happened, and we got it. We got it dialed in for the next two games. Um, game two and game three is more of what you're gonna see um, from the Kings Knights moving forward. Um, Zombie Crusher went off in that game. Um, Crudes went off in that game, or Cordy. Um, and, uh, you know, Snowy, doing Snowy things, setting things up for, for everybody is very well done. Rush is doing exactly what we, we ask him to do. So I, I would expect more 2-0s moving forward from the Knights, I hope. Because they're giving me heart attacks with these two ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh man that was that that was glorious i i don't even i, I don't want to say anything else uh that that rant from from red was just beautiful we didn't Perfect. even shoot first it was freaking lynn in the mid lane oh. <laughs> hey hey just... look look in the general channel on on the podcast oh. here right right now and tell me i just how it I'm... makes you feel oh my goodness how it makes me feel. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Let's stop. Let's stop trolling. Let's let's move on to the next. No more salt in the wound, please. The pain, <laughs> the absolute pain. Oh, please pain. move on before I reach through the computer and slap you both back to your senses. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, the final match in review is the Arc Lords versus uh, the Charlotte Fury with. Um, the Ark Lord's taking a 2-0 victory. Now, I'm going to pass it off to one of you because I, that was a Friday night and I was not available. So I, I actually haven't gotten to review the game. I know that my team is very upset about the result, um, but that's pretty much all I know at this point. Yeah, I solo casted the second game on that one. <laughs> so, Cooter, if you would like to explain your thoughts first. I have to refresh my memory about the the game. Was that early in the week or was it late? It was Friday, right? It was that Friday. was Friday. That was the second that game of the triple header. So, yeah, that was two two days ago. Yeah. So the um, the majors game, which was Phenoms and Reapers, was the early game. This was the second game, and then uh, Obsidian Knights and Booty Boys was the third game that night. So we were a little stretched thin on casters. Um, so actually Neptune, Dragon, and I think it was Wolfman Sam actually started oh, out right. in the booth with me for mm -hmm. game number one. And then they all left because <laughs> they all had to either play or cast uh, <laughs> on the uh, on the Knights Boys game. So I was left by myself um, for game number two. I think Herc actually joined me. Actually, yeah, Herc joined me um, towards the end or middle end of that game. Um, but Arc Lords, I was shocked at how well they actually were able to play together. 
Um, as you know, in that organization, there's been a lot of chaos. Um, there's been a lot of things in the majors, which has kind of trickled down into the minors. And you've had sort of questions going, okay, well, are people getting pulled up? Is this going to happen? Is that going to happen? How is, you know, how's this going to work? Because again, real life is going to interfere with everything. We know that. Okay. Um, so then the question becomes, how are, how's the minor team going to deal with this? Um, and the Arc Lords took it in stride, which just, they played phenomenally. Um, I think it was probably one of the, I think it was probably the best game that so far that they've had this season. Um, and I thought Cyber in the mid lane was excellent. I thought Honkler in solo was just phenomenal. Um, but to be honest, I thought that um, there were some questions going in. Um, Zero was unable to play in mid lane. So you had kittens, you had big bops filling in uh, on that one. And at the end of the day, when you're looking at the whole picture, um, you kind of had to look at it and go, you know what? these were still two really closely matched teams. And I don't think the scoreline really reflected that because both teams had opportunities to win both games. Um, the Arc Lords kind of dominated the first game and then Charlotte Fury came back and was already had taken a Phoenix. They had everything set up. They could have taken that game and it, just didn't fall the right way. The fire giant fell to the Ark Lords. They lost a couple people in the ensuing chaos, and that kind of allowed the Ark Lords to finish out that game. Um, and then in the second game, the Charlotte Fury had, it, it was quite even until about, if I remember correctly, about the 15th, 16th minute, and then Charlotte Fury started to really put their pedal on the, uh, put the pedal to the metal, and then um, it kind of fell off. Um, there was a, a uh, there was, I believe it was a primal fury that was stolen. And then it was the team fights. Like if it was a five on five team fight, the Charlotte fury were just playing excellently. But if it was not a five V five team fight, uh, it, it was, it was the, the, it was the two V twos and the three V twos that just, they got caught out, and that's what ended up turning that game eventually, was the objective was stolen, they jumped onto one, they killed the one, they made it an unbalanced team fight, and that's how the Arc Lords ended up finishing that one. So, um, honestly, I thought both teams played amazing. I thought it was a really, really close set, and I don't think the 2-0 to the Arc Lords actually does justice, because, I mean, mm -hmm. the Charlotte Fury could have had, could have won both of those games, um, and... I I can't give either of those teams enough credit for what they were able to do. Yeah, yeah. I rem I remember that set now too. Now that now that we talked about it. Um and actually hilariously enough, uh Beaten Crayons and I were talking the other day about the the set and he was harassing me about my prediction uh from last week too. Um because I did not have them predicted as winning. Uh but they did end up taking the victory um and we were talking about how uh how big a difference it was for the arc lords that um cyber play cyber playing jungle versus cyber playing mid um cyber makes a huge difference in the jungle obviously he's a jungle main played in the majors last season on a, a pretty successful team um in the jungle and i think he performed very well um in game one specifically um but that that shows the difference between you know the team from the week prior where cyber was playing mid versus you know the week two team where cyber was in the jungle they looked very very strong in week two but you can't take anything away from the fury i, I mean even even telly telly played amazing um he had you know a couple opportunities to to seize the game um, but he, I don't know that he, they, there was as much cohesion there as what they needed to, to make it happen. But, um, very, very good performance. It was a lot of fun to watch. 
um, even with the the major subs coming down to to help them out. All right, all right, that's all good stuff to hear. Like I said, I was completely unavailable uh, past a certain point on Friday night, so I I didn't really. Yeah, you were partying. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> not not to get too deep into the personal weeds, uh -huh. but um, this was Joe, good old Bonsai Joe. He got his first paycheck for his, you know, new job. And so yay. we were out. Yeah, yay. So we were out celebrating. Um, awesome. You know, yeah, yeah, pretty cool. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with, with moving on um, to our predictions. Um, do it. For week number three. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it live. So Reapers <laughs> versus Obsidian Mages. Now, Obsidian Mages played very well in the previous week, and they're going to have a roster change. And I don't know if that roster change necessarily makes them good or uh, better or worse. Um, that's that's going to be yet to be seen, but they did manage to play a lot better. And the Reapers, though, I think are still a pretty solid squad, you know, just looking at who's on it. Um, I think this is going to be a very tough match, though, for sure. I think in the end, though, Reapers are going to end up taking it uh, two to one. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Even with the, the roster changes incoming for the mages, um, I think that uh, the the position swap for Inori and Poyo is a is a big change for the Reapers. And putting Davey in uh, support, I think, is uh, that's huge. I, I think they do take. I think the mages do end up taking a game, uh, but I agree. I think it's going to end up being two one in favor of the Reapers as well. Oh boy, you guys are really backing me into a corner with the lovers quarrel <laughs> here. Um, I, I, no, I'm genuine. No, I'm going to call be, it. Be a free spirit, sir. Uh, I'm. I'm actually. I am going to call it this week. Um, the Reapers Obsidian Mages a game. Of course, the Reapers are part of the Underworld, which is owned by Poe. Obsidian Mages, which is part of the Obsidian Kingdom, owned by Neptune. You know that those two lovebirds are together, so we're calling it the lovers, the lovers quarrel this week. <laughs> um, and this one is so tough for me because if I look at just on paper, just straight up on paper, it's Jinji, Poyo, Bigfoot, Davy, and Anori up against Owen, Desi, Oreo, Slim, and Scarab, and maybe Dragon if Dragon is in there. And we'll see how that meshes. Um, yeah, this is such a close one for me. I was not expecting it to be this close. I was actually expecting um, Reapers to perform better. Um, but I know they just came off a loss from Phenoms. I know they're going to be amped up for this game. Um, but Mages got their first taste of a victory. Um and that one there really, I, I think they're both going to be amped up for this game. Oh, this is killing me. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have to, I almost want to say, I'm, I'm just not going to predict this one. <laughs> you, you can, you can, you're allowed to. Um, you get no points for not predicting though. I know that's the problem. I'm just I'm trying to think here because the the worst part is I know as soon as this episode is released, the first thing that's going to happen is whoever I predict to lose this one, I'm going to get a message. I'm going to get a DM Always. and I'm going to get banned as a mod or something cuz cuz that's just the way it's going to work. Finally. <laughs> Finally. Not about time. Oh. Jesus. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Shot through the heart. Um Oh uh, yeah. Um to blame. I'm actually going to buck the trend here and I'm going to go 2-1 to the mages. Um okay. I I think that's entirely fair. It, it's mm -hmm. I I I'm we'll we'll call this a strategic move because everybody's going 2-1. So it's either 2-1 to the mages or 2-1 to the reapers and all three of you guys cuz Skeet has actually put put in his prediction as well as 2-1 to the reapers. Oh yeah, that's true. So mm -hmm. if it goes two one to the Reapers, 
I lose everything, which is fine. Because remember, we for those of you who are listening, we do sort of have this little contest thing going on. Um, but on the flip side of this, even if I don't get it right, I get a point and everybody else doesn't. So I'm going to go 2-1 to the mages. <laughs> <laughs> He's playing the numbers. That's and funny. I'm sorry, Poe. I'm really sorry, Poe. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, gonna, oh I'm just going to get lambasted, and I know it. Yeah, Poe's po going to drive on down and give you an ass whooping, that's for sure. <laughs> um, so you better watch out. Better lock your I'm, doors. I'm, but... almost, I'm almost more afraid of Poe than I am of Neptune. It actually, oh, no, I take the, I'm not almost. I am more afraid of Poe than I am you of Neptune. Be. Hide your kids. Hide your wife. <laughs> hide everything. <laughs> Poe's coming for you. She's going to show up with the, here's Johnny. Oh, but, oh my you know, God. Just axing yeah. down your door. Yes. You know? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, but uh, we can move on though past the the memes and such, um, into the next matchup, which by the way is something that you might see in the playoff finals. Yeah. So this is definitely the game of the week, the set of the week. No shot. The Kings Dukes versus Phenoms, and this set is gonna be f f f fire. <laughs> absolutely fire i am so damn excited to watch this if not cast it i haven't looked if they've managed to schedule it yet but um whenever it is i'm i'm gonna make time because <laughs> this is I'm, I'm not even kidding you laugh but this is gonna be great this this set is going mm -hmm. to be fantastic even if it ends up being 2-0 in, in one way or another um it's you know it's gonna have drama it's going to have storylines. People are going to be typing in the chats. So that's going to be fun time as a moderator. But <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's going to be very, very fun. And I am going to go out on a limb and say the Kings Dukes take a 2-1 victory against Phenoms. Ooh. Because there's no... I, I don't think there's a way that... Either squad is going to get a 2-0, really, feasibly, um, and, unless one squad is just, like, completely out of sorts in terms of, like, their, their mood, and one team is just, like, you know, keyboard warrioring. But um, I'm going to go out of limb and, and say that the Dukes are going to end up taking this set. I really like how they've been playing, and I really think that that squad has a lot in it that the phenoms might not be exactly prepared for they might try and sneak a couple things here and and pull out a win um in this set so that's my prediction sorry brown side <laughs> now you're gonna get the uh, message <laughs> i'm not gonna give a prediction at all um just some color to what you were saying there about uh, how interesting this set's gonna be so as we're as we're going through here and earlier in the day today, I've been working on a, a new tier list, new power rankings, whatever. Um, and I have for the Dukes and the Phenoms, I have one position. I have them first and third, another position first and second, another position first and second, another position first and second, and another position I have them currently second and fourth. So this should be an absolute barn burner. Don't miss it. You don't want to miss this one. Yeah. Um, oh, boy. I've actually been thinking about this one um, for a couple of minutes now, just trying to piece together thoughts in my head. Um, <laughs> because, like, so let, let's go back to let's go back to my initial analysis, which is if you look at it on paper. I mean, you're looking at Vacus, Drew's food, Sandman Sam going up against Budgie Dude and Omar and Viz and Brownside and Armor Wolf. And it's like, um, okay, how do you match up here? Well, they actually match up pretty stinking well. Um, but I think there are a couple of deficiencies. And because of that, I'm actually going to go. Two one phenoms. I'm 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 leaning towards two o phenoms, 
but I'm going to go 2 1 Phenoms because I think the Dukes do have enough talent that they could steal one game. And I think the Phenoms could actually troll one game too. So I'm going to go 2 1 Phenoms. Um, Skeet has also put in his prediction already as 2 0 Phenoms as well. So I'm going to go 2 1 though. Yeah, there you have it. But like the highlight of this section here is watch this set. If there is any set all season long that you say I have to be there for, it is this one. No doubt about it. This is the match that is going to blow everyone's socks off, and there's going to be a lot of storylines and a lot of drama. So okay, get your <laughs> pants buckled, boys. We're going right into it. So uh, with that said, we move on to the next matchup. We have the Arkham Dragons versus the Boonie Gang. Um, hold on. Okay, so the Dragons are going to have their roster change available. If NMR is playing in this set, oh boy, do Arkham Dragons have a very, very strong squad to go up against this, this Boonie Gang that's, you know, it, they're coming off of a very unfortunate loss in uh, the form of the previous week. So, uh, with that said, I think they're going to come with some fire, but also feeling a little bit down and disappointed with their performance. I hope they review that game, but if not, you know, I, I think this is going to be a strong Arkham Dragons victory. Um, I, I'm going to go 2-0 Arkham Dragons on this one. Yeah, there's, a, there's definitely a big, big question mark going into this week and that is does nmr play and if nmr plays where is he playing because this this man is absolutely a, a difference maker um for this team and, and for really any team that he would end up ha have ended up going to so i think i think it ends up being with nmr playing I think it goes 2-1 Dragons, and that's what I'm going to go with. If he doesn't play, I think it ends up being different, but I, I'm just going to say 2-1 Dragons. I'm going to yeah. stick with it. Yeah, the, the big if is NMR, you know, and if he's not there, our predictions are going to be totally wrong. But I'm going off the knowledge that I know he has a computer. I know he's been playing games. Um, if that team can make the time, go for it, or just reschedule this game honestly like play it whenever you actually have your boy um mm -hmm. yeah right, skeet Red. actually when when skeet did his predictions earlier today he goes yeah 2-0 archon dragons if nmr plays if he doesn't it's 2-0 boonie so he honestly thinks that nmr makes that big of a difference onto this dragons roster it's a full two game swing um mm -hmm. so I'm inclined to believe him as well. Um, I think it is going to be 2-0 to the Dragons. Um, I think Boonie Gang just has... I, I think they have a great basis on Subkiller and on... Um, um, and on uh, Castler there, the, the the wings of that team are excellent. How that's going to play out, I think, is the big question. Um, and so, you know, it, it's, you know, how how is that team going to be able to mesh together up against the like of Ohea in the mid lane and, you know, Half Hero in the jungle? Um, and if NMR shows up and they push, you know, half hero out to solo if through or if Tantalus goes somewhere else or if Boom have because Boom have was the solo in this game too, in the last game. And so if Boom have goes into solo lane and NMR shows up and he takes, you know, you know, he goes into the carry role. Let, let's just, you know, throw that out there. If you throw NMR into the carry role with Tantalus as support, that is dangerous that is just flat out dangerous at this point um and so i'm i i have to go 2-0 to the dragons yep and there you have it 
so we can move on here to the next matchup and the finals majors matchup, the final majors matchup of week three that we will be, be predicting. It is the Pittsburgh Phantoms versus, <clears throat> excuse me, Pittsburgh Phantoms versus the Zeus Juice. So um, as this is my majors team and my organization, I will pass it off to Cooter to start us off. I think if the the phenoms and the dukes set isn't this week i think this is the set of the week um very very even matchup uh for these two teams um but i think the biggest difference which is saying nothing at all against the the mid laner for Ju zeus juice justin um i i think the biggest difference comes from stages if stages doesn't feel pressure um he he just wins games um for the phantoms so for that reason i'm going 20 phantoms yeah uh, for a lot of the same reasons i'm going the same way 20 phantoms and all i can say is hashtag stages diff <laughs> yeah yeah i'll i'll give i'll give color to it uh, to give you know background we have scrim zeus juice before um <laughs> I don't think Stages took it very seriously because I think that's the time he went um, older in the mid lane, if I recall correctly. <laughs> so um, we ended up splitting one set 1-1. One, one. Um, I don't know if they ever played again, but I'm pretty sure that game too was the older game, but <laughs> if I can recall correctly. <laughs> so um, yeah, I don't know, but it's, you know, I'm not going to predict it, obviously, but I think... This is definitely a fun matchup for sure. But yeah, if you let the key pieces of Phantoms run wild, it's going to be rough if you're Zeus Juice. Mm -hmm. If I you let say... Kexen have free run of the map, if you let stages yeah. just pop off, you know, um, at this point, uh, Yuri is the starter at solo, you know, and he can play that role very, very well if he isn't out of his mind, you know, like he, he will just be solid. So. Um, there, there's a lot you have to look out for if you're Zeus Juice, in my opinion. I will say Skeet has predicted this 2-1 in favor of Zeus Juice, so I don't know if he has some uh, insider information going on here, um, but he went 2-1 to Zeus Juice instead of uh, the other way around. Interesting. Yes. Hot take. I mean, I think it's fair, honestly. It depends on what version of the Phantom shows up that day. <laughs> There's uh, the version where we're lo they're locked in, which is how they've been showing up to league matches. But <laughs> there, there are some scrims that they've uh, just decided to not show up to, uh, basically. So <laughs> kind of a, a story of, of two different teams there. But um, we can now move on to the Miners predictions here, though. And to start us off, we have the Ferryman versus the obsidian knights and the obsidian knights have shown to be a very strong team ferryman coming off of a very tough loss where they had basically nothing going for them so what do i see here um in in the quote-unquote lover's quar quarrel as uh red has decided <laughs> to dub it here lover's quarrel um, part two yeah yeah it. miners version it's like it's like a it, it's it's just like a fight <laughs> um, not a quarrel, maybe a downgrade in language terms, but um, it's it's honestly like if if the fairmen show up as they did in week one, I can see them winning this this um in a in a tough spot. But I think the Obsidian Knights are kind of the stronger squad on on paper, and so for that reason, I'm going to go two zero Ob Ob Knights. Red, you want to take the second take on this one? Oh boy. Um yeah, I might as well. Um yeah, this one, I mean, when I looked at this earlier today, um and I kind of went, okay, who do I think is going to win each lane? Who do I think each team could win through? Um two names really stuck out to me, and on the ferryman, it's Omega Bulldog and Raptor. Omega Bulldog, we know, has been running lanes all season long. 
it is something that quite frankly surprised me. I did put him as one of my top three solo laners, but outside of I mean I I had Satan as number one and he ran down Satan. Um so at this point, I think Omega Bulldog is kind of the solo laner to beat in the mini in the uh, minor league. And so I think Define is going to have his hands full. On the other side of the map, though, or I shouldn't say on the other side of the map, but on the other another part of the map, you've got Peaceful and Raptor. That mid lane matchup is going to be an absolute banger. If Raptor holds his own, I think his team might be able to push ahead. However, if Peaceful does Peaceful things, he's going to he's going to just take over the game. Chaos is way too good as a carry to kind of let Louie do what he wants to do. So Chaos can at least hold even or even beat Louie in lane. I think it's really going to come down to the mid support synergy when the supports roll over to the mid lane. I think it's really going to come down to Raptor and Hercules working together or Peaceful and Wolfman working together. And even this one is on a knife edge for me um, because of what happened in week two. Week two kind of threw everything. I thought I knew exactly how this was going to go. And week two kind of threw me for a loop. And so mm -hmm. on this one, I'm going to have to give the edge to Obsidian Knights as well. I don't think it's going to be a 2-0. I think 2-1 because I think somehow, some way Raptor does either hold lane or maybe mitigates a little bit enough that um, the Omega factor comes in and Omega Bulldog is able to kind of be that front line to push team fights to their advantage. So I'm going to go 2-1 Obsidian Knights. I still think they take it, uh, take the victory, but I think the Ferrymen do pull a game. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I think... For me, I have it going 2-0 uh, for the Obsidian Knights because of the, the mid-3v3 there. Um, Wolfman Sam is, is absolutely insane. Um, and I think that is going to be a huge, huge difference um, in this game. And not to say Hercules is, is bad by any means. I, I think Wolfman Sam is legitimate uh, Major's material based on what I was, what I was watching um, in Peaceful absolutely ran last game so uh, maybe it's a little bit of recency bias um but i'm gonna go 2-0 obsidian knights on this one yeah and skeet's prediction on this one was 2-0 to the ferryman so he he definitely sees something in the ferryman that none of the rest of us are seeing um but yeah i think to be honest week two kind of threw everybody's expectations to the wind mm-hmm for sure, for sure. Um, but we will move on to the next matchup. We have the Kings Knights versus the Little Noms. And this is going to be an exciting match, I think. A lot of the, the players on the Kings Knights are definitely going to be amped up for this, I think. After, you know, trolling once before last week, um, I think they're going to be locked in. Um, and... Honestly, it could be a pretty big fight, but I can also see it kind of going by the wayside, um, especially if game one, the little noms kind of run it down pretty much. So uh, for that reason, while I expect, ooh, this is still tough though for me personally, I think I'm going to give it 2-1 little noms. I think the King's Knights might have something to fight for here for sure but they are going to have to be entirely locked in for this. And the little noms, you know, are going to have to be kind of feeling, for whatever reason, like not on their game, I think. I, I think if both squads show up with the same energy, I think little noms take it all the time. But, you know, it depends on which team shows up here, uh, honestly, for both squads. Um, their mental is really kind of thing on the line. You know, everyone's expecting little noms to run stuff and the King's Knights are, you know, a ton of people who are friends. So um, it's just like, how can you keep the cohesion going forward? But that will be my prediction for this set. And Red, you can take it from there. The biggest question on this set is 
how do little noms cope with the loss of Satan? That is true. Because he's no longer their solo laner. And their solo lane was a huge reason why Ferrymen had the biggest problems that they've had all season. Um, You know, it, Omega was able to run down Satan, but Satan still held his own and was able to come back as a tank later on in the games. However, this one here, you don't have that sturdy, dependable tank. Your support is, or your, I you should say, your sub is Mad Matt. And as much love as I got for the man, as you know, I had him, I, I, he was on my team last season. Um, I don't put him up there with Omega. I don't put him up there with, um, with Atticus. I don't put him up there with Achilles. Um, it's going to be really, really tough if Matt has to fill in in the soul lane. Now, if he goes to support and Caps moves to solo, which makes it makes a little bit more sense. How is he going to have, how in the world is he going to try and compensate for Snowy? That is a huge mismatch in my opinion, because Snowy in my, in my opinion is the Knight's best player. He's the captain and he, I believe he's their best player. Are they going to be able to find somebody before this game? Big question. If not, if Matt plays, I am I am leaning towards the Knights picking up the win and handing Noms their first loss of the season. And just based on that, I think I'm going to go 2-0 to the Kings Knights. If if Matt plays, that I can't even say that. You know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go two one, two one. I I still think that there's way too much talent on little noms. Um, I still think those players are too mechanically gifted. I, I'm I'm gonna go two one to the Kings Knights. There you go, Cooter. Do you have anything you want to add to this matchup? What your boys might be thinking? <laughs> Please, for the love of God, don't don't troll. Just don't troll. Oh, crap. I, I forgot don't... the troll aspect. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, I think Red hit it on the head with Snowy. I think he has the potential to be the best player on the team. Um, I think he's a little raw when it comes to just general experience in the game. Because he is very new. He, he's, you know, he's got... Compared to a lot of these people, he's got a ton less hours than them. But mechanically, he is he's a god. And once he gets uh, some more time under his belt, uh, you could definitely see that man in the majors and, and making a big difference on a majors team. I'm excited for this matchup, too. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a fun one. And it's going to be interesting, especially as as we pointed out, the, the, the roster change that little noms have gone through. They're not exactly the uh, the titan that uh they once were so we'll see how they cope with this difference as we move forward but we do move into the next matchup we have the arc lords versus the boonie boys now these are actually two squads that i'm not super duper familiar with so um i'm gonna go look at some things and i'll give it to our favorite king Kuchiman here to start perfect perfect um so for this set um I have a, a bit of a, uh, like a contingency, but I am just going to go solidly 2-0 Lords. But I think it ends up being 2-1 still in favor of the Lords if Cyber's playing mid. They decided to pull the trigger and put Cyber in the jungle, um, put Blazing Raven in mid. I think uh, it, it ends up being 2-0 Lords. But if they have, you know, Cyber mid, I think it's 2-1 Lords. I, I think um, Cyber is a big difference maker in the jungle. So I'm going to go, like I said, 2-0 to the Lords. That is true. That is true. Cyber played very well, very recently mm -hmm. in that jungle. It's definitely his best role and was a lot of trouble for the Fury previously. And mm -hmm. I'm honestly inclined to go with what seems to be consensus so far, pending red, um, a 2-0 victory for the Arc Lords. 
Um, they they have a lot of firepower, and um, yeah, if they make that move, I think that makes that team definitely a, a top three contender in the minors for sure. So that that that's my prediction. Um, and I guess I'm gonna make it the clean sweep. Um, I thought that maybe Booney Boys could change things around by moving Jeering around. It obviously didn't take last week. Um, and I think that there's going to be some, there, there needs to be some changes. There needs to be some differences on the Booney Boys. I don't know if it's communication that needs to change or if it's simply just the interactions between the players, but if something's got to give, and right now the only thing that's going to give is the Booney Boys in their loss column. It's going to go up by one. So I'm going 2-0 to the Ark Lords. And there you have it. Um, <laughs> I think that's our, our quickest prediction yet. Um, <laughs> really coming in quick. So we're, we're, make, we're schmoovin', we're schmoovin' and groovin', sirs. And we do move into the final match that we will talk about today. We have the Charlotte Vury versus the Chosen Guans. And so I will hand it off to Red to begin. Oh boy, does Lynn do it again? <laughs> do I get trolled by another team? <laughs> How much pain am I willing to feel on this one? <laughs> um just looking across the board. Looking at who's going to be playing where, how things are going to go. If Zero is back, if Zero is back, I think it's 2-0 to the Charlotte Fury. If Zero is not playing, I think it's 2-1 to the Charlotte Fury. Um, I think Zero is very solid in the mid lane. I think Kittens is an adequate replacement. Um, but I think that there may be some flexibility issues. Maybe kittens would feel a little bit more comfortable in a different role other than mid. Um, but that being said, I'm still going to go two out of the Charlotte Fury. Even, you know what, even if kitten pl kittens plays, I'm still going two out of the Charlotte Fury. Ooh. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I think kittens is a very, very good player. Um, but Zero is also a very good player. So if Zero ends up playing over Kittens, or if Kittens play, ends up playing over Zero, I don't know that it makes uh, that big of a difference. Uh, they're both very strong players. So I actually have 2-1 Fury. Uh, I think uh, the Chosen Guans end up stealing one just as, uh, just as they did last week. I think, uh, I, I think they have a, a bit of potential. Um, I think Dummy Slick has very, very good um, carry potential with Ban Herc. Um, so for that, I, I think they might be able to steal a game. But I, I still have Charlotte Fury winning 2-1. Uh, What's Skeet have for this one? 2-0 Fury. Uh, Skeet's 2-0 Fury on this one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I guess just to give Carler, I believe... Zero plans to be in attendance. He's currently on vacation. That's why he was absent for the previous game. Hmm. Um, but, you know, um, scheduling for both of the, the mid laners is kind of rough. So mm -hmm. it kind of depends on a couple things. This one might be rescheduled. I, I'm, I'm not quite sure how they're feeling at the moment. Um, but you, you, I, I tend to agree that Zero and... Kittens are kind of interchangeable at the moment. I think once Zero gets significantly more hours on the keys, he will surpass Kittens eventually. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, I think they're very comparable um, in terms of how they're playing. I think Zero has better callouts. I think Zero has better macro knowledge. But, you know, when it comes down to it, when it comes down to the individual play, um, I, I think at the moment they're they're pretty much even. I, I wouldn't really say it's like a uh, kittens makes that team a whole lot worse. Um, 
they're pretty much the same at this point. Because do, re do remember, Zero is not only moving from the sticks to the keys, but he is also moving from the solo to the mid. So, but he, mm -hmm. he still is a very, very solid player. Um, and, and that's what I'll attest to with that. But that does bring us to the end of the docket. So, um, with that said, do we have any parting thoughts here? I don't have anything. The only thing I would reiterate is, uh, you know, keep an eye out for the, the, that, that highlight major set of the Dukes versus the Phenoms. Um, specifically for anybody who's looking to, uh, you know, learn maybe about the, the new patch with the, the boots, trying to pick up some things from other players, or if you're just looking to get better as a player, watching that set could really, really do you some good. There are some phenomenal players. I feel bad because I said phenomenal and it's phenoms, but there are oh some phenomenal goodness. players on those two teams. I, I think that most anybody can learn something in that set. Mm -hmm. If you're not learning, you're definitely watching in anticipation. If you're the mm -hmm. other majors players, just seeing what's going to come out of that set. And then as the moderators, as we hope that people don't blow up in general chat. But... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It'll be good. It's all in good fun. We're all here to play Smite and have some fun together. It's not, uh, you know, there's not anything serious at the end of the day. We all have to go to work tomorrow. <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> the internet tends to be a kind of a different place when, when it comes to that. But for sure, definitely, if you're still listening, uh, please watch that set. Whenever it comes, whenever the schedule comes out for it, please. If, if there's anything you watch in, in Quack and Smite League all season long, it's, it's that. So <laughs> yeah. uh, with that said, do you have anything else to add, Red, before we end here? Yeah, a couple of things. First of all, um, Poe, don't kill me, please. <laughs> uh, I I I hope you don't know what my address is, um, but either way, I'm going to be locking my doors for the next couple weeks. Um, Lynn, you, love you. You're a doll. Don't mean anything by it. Just you know. Also, please don't kill me. Um, and Neptune, this doesn't mean I like you more than Poe. Don't push it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, but oh. other than that, yeah, looking forward to having some fun in the booth this week. Um, you know, seeing what happens during these games. And you know what? Week three, we're going to be halfway through the season. Um, after week three, not only are we going to do this podcast again, but I am going to release my mid-season tier list um, after week three. And I will also be releasing predictions for seeding for the playoffs. So we're really going to have some going out on the limb moments in the next week. Um, <laughs> but we'll see what happens for the following week. So again, beginning of week four. So look for that one probably next week. Um, probably next week, Sunday, maybe next week, Monday. So looking closer to um, the be the end of the month um, is probably end, end of July, beginning of August is when that episode is going to release um, of my QSL tier list and mid-season uh, mid predictions. Um, but yeah, that being said, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to some really good smite this week. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So my parting thoughts are going to be, one, Poe, kill him, please. Um, two, uh, to Red, we definitely need to have a, a meeting about <laughs> the, the postseason for sure. Um, but three, you know, if you're still listening, thank you all for watching. Um, it's been a great time. Uh, this is going to be a fantastic week for sure. Mm -hmm. And I hope that you have a great day or evening or whatever it is, whenever you're listening. So oh, wait, before we sign off, I guess it's mm. my turn. Cause I know, I know, um, Cooter did it. And I don't know if you did it last week, Jer, but I guess it's I my week this time. Um, so this one is a riddle for people. Ooh. 
Um, and so I will tell you this. I am an avid whiskey drinker. What's my favorite whiskey? If you can flit on over and drop a worm into my DMs with the correct answer, I will give you a subscription to the QSL Twitch channel. So again, flit on over and drop a worm into my into my DMs on Discord. And if you get it right, I'll uh you'll you'll have enough luck to be a subscriber to the QSL Twitch channel. Nice. I love it. All right. Well, with that, boys, I think we end it.